What's happening guys, Dan Debenham here. We're gonna look at giving your photos a little bit of life. So invariably, you end up, when you're doing a video, or you're doing a film, or you're doing a corporate shoot, or whatever, you often end up with photos that are given to you as part of the footage. We need you to do a photo on this, we need you to look at that, uh, include this, include that, and short of sort of zooming them in slowly, sort of a la National Geographic or whatever, um, you've kind of like, you've got to sort of make it appear like it's a bit more lively than just a photo popped on screen to show um, uh, uh, what they're trying to look at. So in this tutorial we're going to look at how we do a 2.5D photo. So how we get 2.5D out of a 2D photograph. It's not that difficult to do but it just gives you that little bit more of something to uh, um, switch and change it up a little bit. So without further ado let's dive into Premiere Pro and let's see how we get it done. So we've got into Premiere Pro, we've got our timeline set up and we've got a couple of images we're going to use. The first one we're going to use is this image, it's an image of the, an image, image, an image of the Matterhorn. Um, I'm just going to make it the right size so it fits, so because it's quite a big image that. And the second image we're going to use is of um, a woman on a mountaintop, which is this one here. So we're going to drag a woman on a mountaintop on top of the Matterhorn image, like so. So we're all good and we're all going. And as you can see, I need to be able to see both images because we're going to try and make these move independently um, to give it that 2.5D feel to it. So, first things first, for first, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we've selected the woman on the mountaintop and then we're going to click on the opacity mask and create a mask in there. I'm going to zoom in slightly, uh, probably to about 200 here. Um, and the reason for that is because I... Um, I know that the mask tool on Premiere Pro wants you to constantly uh, rotate it left and right if you get the points too close together. So you need to be zoomed in a little bit further in order to make that work and stop you from tearing your hair out every time you move the uh, mask. Put the point down. So uh, what we're going to do is just going to quickly, going to very quickly just do a little bit of a mask around it. Like so, I'm going to zoom in even further now because I need to be a bit closer to this lady and her figure. I need to get that arm in, like so. Just put a little bit. Can you see how it wants me to? I want to put a point really there, but I can't because it wants me to uh, stick a rotation in, and I don't want to rotate it. See, that's rubbish as well. That's the that's where you want to be, roughly about there, and then and it sticks. Very annoying, very annoying, Adobe. And we're just going to keep going. And as I say, you might need to zoom in a little bit further, or you might need to work out where you need to put your spacers in order to be able to get your. Um, points and your and handles and what have you all in the right places um, just to stop yourself from tearing your hair out and having a panic attack over not being able to get the mask in the right place so I'm just going to go down there I'm going to zoom back out again just so that I can see what I'm working with um, now I could I could just dive straight off the edge here but I think it'd probably work better if I took that mountainscape side there as well. We're just going to come straight off the edge. Uh, and we'll just zoom out 75% so I can just close this mask off like so. And now you can see that we have got ourselves a cutout of the original image, the woman on a mountain, and the... Um, Matterhorn at the same time. So, what we can do if I just click off that altogether, just click off that altogether, you can see that's what we've got. I've reduced the mask feather to zero um, just to make it a little bit sharper and a little bit clearer. What I'm going to do with the Matterhorn is I'm going to make the Matterhorn 60% of the size and then I'm going to start it there. 
So I'm going to bring the matter on because I've made the image bigger. Obviously, the image is a lot bigger than the other one. Um, I'm going to uh, just start it there like so, and that's pretty cool. That's that's quite quite like how that works. Or should I? No, I won't do. It. What I'll do is. So we'll go back to the beginning of the timeline. We're at the beginning and uh, we're going to select the Matterhorn clip. We're going to go to position uh, and then we're going to uh, switch across to here. Backspace once, that's your, your uh, left arrow once just to come back so you're into it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise this up to about there. So what we get is we get that. We get a nice gentle rise up now you can already see that it looks sort of sort of 3d as it is so we're going to come back to the beginning again we're going to select the woman on a mountain top we're going to select scale and then we're going to go all the way across left arrow key again once and then we're going to say let's make this 120 that's pretty cool um, then I'm going to go back to the original thing, the original um, keyframe we put in. So that's using those little arrows up here in the top corner next to where it says scale. And I'm going to go to position, hit position keyframe there. So we went back to where we were at the beginning. And I'm going to lower it slightly. So I'm going to lower it ever so slightly. Not a lot, just a little bit just so that it gives that appearance of it coming forward and you getting over the top of the mountain. And you've effectively, you've effect effectively created a 2.5D image from two 2D images. Same principle would happen, would, it, would be in effect if this were, we were using the whole of the same image, the original image of this foreground and the background, we would just, we would just copy the image twice, cut her out and that side out and then enlarge the background so that it fits and go from there. Pretty simple stuff. It just adds that little bit more to your photos. It just gives you a little bit of something else. It means you can use two or three different variants on the same theme. You can have a couple moving in and a couple moving out, one or two maybe slowly moving from right to left or left to right. But you can also do this 2D uh, photo and you can do it out of a couple of different photos if you want. It doesn't have to be all the same photo. Um, but as I say, it just gives you that little bit more in your arsenal of things you can do just sort of like build on what you've already got. So with that, I hope you did enjoy it. I hope it's useful and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.